Hey guys, today we are looking at our notes for 1.5, which is all about exponents. So if you haven't experienced exponents before, um, it is basically a way of representing a multiplication over multiple times of the exact same number. So in an exponent or in an exponential expression, we have a base that we have, that is the number that is going to be multiplied together multiple times, and then we have the exponents, which sometimes we'll also call the power. It tells us how many times we're multiplying something together. So for example, up above that, we have 4 times 4 times 4. So we have the same number being multiplied together three times. So instead of writing out 4 times 4 times 4, we could write that using exponents as 4 to the third power, 4 with an exponent of 3 on it. And again, like I just said, that is read as x to the nth power, or 4 to the third power. <clears throat> so that's what exponents are. We're going to go through a couple of examples of just how we can work with them, how we can combine them together. We've got three different ways of writing this. We have what we call expanded notation, so that's the full multiplication. We have exponential expression, which is like we just rewrote. We have a base and an exponent. And then over on the far right side where it just says value, we could combine them together and find just a single value, a single number that represents that multiplication or that exponential expression. So for these, I'm just going to do the odds. We'll kind of skip back and forth, and I'll talk through them. Um, that way we're not drolling on for too long. So in number one, <clears throat> I have 11 times 11, so 11 two times. So if I wanted to write that as an exponential expression, that would be 11 squared, 11 squared. Now for the value side of things, you're probably going to want a calculator. And I say probably to be kind, you're definitely going to want a calculator for the value part of things. Because <clears throat> as you can see moving forward, we're going to have a lot of things being multiplied together. Now. On the normal calculators that I have on loan in the, the little bin back there, um, or most most calculators um, have the same or very similar buttons on how to evaluate exponents. If I wanted to try and try and find the value of it, now obviously I could just do 11 times 11 in my calculator and get 121. But if I wanted to practice using my calculator to evaluate an exponent, <clears throat> the way that I would type this in. 11, there's a little button on your calculator that kind of looks like a rooftop, like a really wide upside down V. That's our exponent button. So if I type in 11, that little exponent button, the rooftop, it's called a caret. <clears throat> and then number two, that should give you 121. I don't know why I spaced that out so much. 121. So that's 11 squared. Or that one is still on your multiplication table. Right, 11 and 11 is on your times table to be 121. <clears throat> so to convert to our exponential expression, we're really just counting up how many times you're multiplied together. That is my exponent, and then my base stays the same. That's whatever was multiplied together. So skipping number two and going down to number three, my base here is negative five. That's not gonna change. It's still negative five. But I have four of them being multiplied together. <clears throat> so negative 5 to the fourth power. So again, if I wanted to evaluate this and find the actual single value, the single number value, I'd have to multiply 5 together, or sorry, negative 5 together four times. Now, <clears throat> on the calculator, again, you have to be careful. The ones that I have that um, you guys are allowed to borrow has parentheses buttons, is we need to be careful because this is a negative five as my base. And the way that I type this in with my calculator, something we'll talk about in a future chapter, a future section this chapter with order of operations, <clears throat> I need to make sure that that fourth power is applied to my negative five as the base and not just the five, the negative as well. So this is how I would have to type that in the calculator. I'm gonna open up a parenthesis, the negative button, five, close my parenthesis, the caret, that's my exponent button, and four. Here, we should get 625. Or again, you could just type in negative five times negative five gives you 25, 
times negative 5 gives you negative 125 times negative 5 gives you a positive 625. So if we head on down to number 5, for 5 we now hopefully notice that there are two different bases, two different numbers that are being multiplied. I have 7 times 7 times 4 times 4 times 4. So I, when I'm evaluating these, I have to keep my bases, my numbers that are being multiplied together, separate. I can only combine them into an exponential expression with the base that's being multiplied together. So here I'm going to actually have two different bases and two different exponents. Because I have 7 being multiplied together twice, so 7 squared. And I also have 4 being multiplied together three times. 4 cubed. So that would be that number as an exponential expression. From here, finding the individual value, we could do it one of two ways. Since we have the expanded view all the way over to the left, you could just grab your calculator, type in 7 times 7 times 4 times 4 times 4. If you wanted to, you could also use your calculator and uh, evaluate these as exponents. I would do them separately. So 7 squared is 49, 4 cubed is 64. So then you would use your calculator to find what 49 times 64 is to give us a big number, 3,136. Well, 3136. All right, for number 7 here, same idea. Now, this one, a little tricky because they mix them up. Um, the numbers, the bases are not next to each other. I've got 2 thirds times 9 times 2 thirds times 9. So I've got 2 thirds being multiplied twice and 9 being multiplied twice. So even though they're kind of separate, they're not right next to each other, I could rearrange it if we wanted to. I have my 2 thirds being multiplied twice, I have my 9 being multiplied twice as well. <clears throat> so the same idea here, you can use your calculator to type this in if you want to. Um, this 2 thirds, the way that I would type this in, let's, let's use red and since I'm not going to be doing the next box down below, the way that you would type this in, parenthesis 2, you could just use the division button on your calculator, it acts like a fraction when we need it to, divided by 3, to the second power equals, it should give you a four over nine or 0 0.4 repeated. <clears throat> and then, so if that's the case, we've got four over nine was two thirds squared, nine squared, nine times nine is 81. If we multiply 4 over 9 times 81, we should end up with a positive 36 for my solution. So positive 36 for that individual value. Which again, you could use your calculator from the expanded view, but we need to make sure we're ready and capable of evaluating these with a calculator as well, not in the expanded view if it's just giving you an exponential. Okay, hopping on down to number 9. Number nine, we've got xy times xy times xy times xy times xy. So this one, we start obviously throwing some variables in there. We've got some unknown values. Um, for these, it does not make a difference what my base is. It can be a number. It can be just a, a variable, an unknown. I still have xy being multiplied together a total of five times. So if my base is xy, it is being raised to the fifth power. <clears throat> uh, there's no value. I, I can't rewrite that. I can't find an, an individual value without knowing what x or y. Well, actually, in this case, x and y are equal to. So I don't have a, a value that I can simplify all that way, that far right corner, that far right column. For number 11, if we skip down to the next odd problem, um, here again, we've got two different bases. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six Ks, and then one, two, three nines. <clears throat> so traditionally, we write our number first, 
and then any variable afterwards. Because again, we have two different bases. They're going to be separate things that are listed next to each other. They're going to be multiplied together. But again, traditionally, conventionally, we'll write the number first and then the variable afterwards. So this is 9 to the third power since there were three of them. And then k we said was to the sixth power. There were six of them. So that's an exponential uh, view, exponential form. The far right column, I can't do anything with that k to the sixth power, but I could use my calculator to find what 9 to the third power is. Right, 9 times 9 times 9, or use your calculator again, 9, that little rooftop caret button to the third power, so to 3, and then head equals. You should get 729, and then my k to the sixth power is still there. That didn't go away, it's just where it is. <clears throat> Okay, last one for this page. Uh, for number 13, we have P minus 2 times P minus 2 times P minus 2. So that parenthesis is being multiplied together three times. Now this is getting a, a little more advanced, and we're not going to see this again for a little while um, with these algebraic expressions as my base. But in this case, my uh, base of p minus 2, that parenthesis, is being multiplied together three times. So similar to how we did xy in parenthesis, we're just going to do in parenthesis p minus 2 as my base, and we're multiplying that together three times, so that's to the third power. And again, there's nothing I can simplify with that. We don't even bother doing anything algebraically with that really until algebra 1 Algebra, maybe algebra 1, algebra 2 is more likely to see a problem like this where we'd actually do something with it. More than likely, this is just the extent of what we'll do. All right, flipping it on over for your backside of your notes. Now we're getting into some of the weirder stuff, some of the special cases with exponents. On the front side, we talked about how the exponent tells you how many times you multiply that base, right? 2 squared means I'm multiplying two together twice, right? There's two twos being multiplied together. If I had two to the first power, that would be just a single two. So this special case kind of pops up here where if we're trying to figure out an exponent on zero or an exponent of zero, that means there's no number there, right? Two, like two to the zero power would be like two, but two is not there. We're not multiplying any, any twos in there. So kind of weird, but anything that's raised to the first power, to the zero power, is always positive one. Always. Anything to the zero power is one. Doesn't matter what that base is, it's positive one. So one to the zero power, still one. Two to the zero power is one. Three to the zero is one. Four to the zero to the one is one. Even x to the zero is positive one, as long as that base is not zero. Because we don't deal with um, zero to the zero power. It's undefined. It's a weird mathematical thing um, where we can't figure out zero to zero, zero power because it's just, it's just weird. It's undefined. Okay, so if we're using that same idea, <clears throat> if every time we increase uh, exponent, we're multiplying by that base again, if I start working backwards, going down an exponent would be like dividing by that number. So something weird happens as soon as you hit that negative number, as soon as you have a negative exponent on it, you actually start dividing by that number. So kind of something that pops up, this, this rule, if we have something to a negative exponent, in order to get that exponent to be positive, we've got to flip it over because we're dividing by that many bases, right? If we have 2 to the negative second power, or in, in the case of 5 to the negative second, that's like dividing by 5 twice, which is 1 over 5 times 5, which is 1 over 25. So the way that we'll handle this, anytime you have a negative exponent, it's going to flip my fraction over, and my exponent is then going to be positive. So this one is weird because it's not already a fraction, but we should remember that anytime we're dealing with a whole number, it can always be written as a fraction over 1. So if I'm flipping this fraction over, 
this is going to become 1 over 5, and it's now to the positive second power. 1 over 5 to the positive second. Because again, I'm flipping that fraction over, that exponent is becoming negative. Or it's going to become positive from negative. Uh, from here, we're just going to simplify. So now I can evaluate 5 squared. 5 to the second power is 25. And that's as far as I can take that one. Okay, moving along, number 17, we've got 9 to the negative first power. So again, if I've got a negative exponent somewhere, that has to get flipped over. And now it's 9 to the positive first underneath. I don't have to do anything with that. 9 to the first power is just 9. So 1 over 9 is my solution. That's my, my answer with positive exponents evaluated as far as I can. For number 19, number 19, we've got 10 to the negative third power. So I have to flip that over again. There's no denominator to start with, so it's a positive 1. <clears throat> 10 to the third. So 10 to the third power, you can use your calculator. Little little trick, shortcut, because especially like in your science classes eventually, you'll be dealing a lot with bases of 10. Whatever your, your exponent is on 10, that just tells you how many zeros are in your answer. So like 10 squared is 100, which has two zeros. 10 to the third power is 1,000, which has three zeros. So that's my answer, 1 over 1,000. When you have multiple things in your expression that have negative exponents, you have to make sure that everything that has a negative exponent gets flipped over. And we have to make sure that only the things that have negative exponents on it get flipped over. So here, if I rewrite each of these individual terms, 4 to the negative third and 7 to the negative first, <clears throat> I've got to flip it over and then my exponent becomes positive. So 1 over 4 cubed times, still times in between, 1 over 7 to the first. I can use my calculator to evaluate 4 to the third power we got once 1 over 64 times 1 over 7. I'll use my calculator to remember multiplying fractions. We just multiply straight across. 1 times 1 is 1. 64 times 7 is 448. All right. Just a couple more. A couple more. So here, this is what I was emphasizing on the previous problem with number 23. Number 23, we've got 3 to the positive fourth power times 9 to the negative second. Now, and here, since 3 has a positive 4 as its exponent, it doesn't have to get flipped over. It's only that 9 to the negative second that has to get flipped over to make that exponent positive. So when I do that, my 3 to the 4th power stays up top, and then my 9 squared goes underneath. And you can write it as one fraction. If you really want to, you could write this as 3 to the 4th power times 1 over 9 squared, if that makes you happy. But uh, personal choice, personal preference. So I'll grab my calculator. 3 to the 4th power is 81. 9 squared is also 81. And we know that anything divided by itself is just positive 1. 81 divided by 81 is 1. Okay. Two more. And we're almost, we're almost there, guys. 25 is x to the negative 9th power. Again, all we care about is that my variable has a positive exponent on it. It still behaves the same way. I have to flip it over to make that exponent positive. 1 over x to the ninth is as far as I can go, since I can't evaluate that any further. All right, last one. Messy, messy stuff. So remember, anything that has a negative exponent has to get flipped over. Anything that was a positive exponent stayed as it was. So if I just focus on my positive, uh, my negative exponents flipping, my s to the 0, that's positive. That means it's not negative, so it can stay up top. t to the 11th was also positive exponent, so it could stay up top. But my r has to get flipped over because it had a negative exponent on it. r to the negative 6th power, when I flip it, becomes r to the 6th. Now, there shouldn't be really anything that I can evaluate with a variable base but we should hopefully notice that that exponent on s was 0, which means it turns into a 1. 
everything else stays the same. And we know that multiplying anything by one just doesn't change anything. So I could just list my answer as t to the 11th over, whoops, r to the 6th. All right. So that is it for today. As always, if you guys have any questions, concerns, thoughts, ideas, hopes, or dreams, make sure you guys are reaching out and letting me know. Otherwise, have a fantastic day. We'll see you soon.